How do you do? I am very glad that you could be here to see those scenes just shown. Each one represented a small part of a painful incident or a heartbreaking tragedy. And it should be easy for you to picture in each case the other scenes of worry, trouble, and tears they have caused. Such things do happen to school children, and they happen most frequently near schools that are not protected by school safety patrols. These patrols were first organized in Ohio, and it wasn't long before schools in every state in the Union had well-trained school safety patrols. Today, there are hundreds of them guarding the lives of children as they go to and from school each day. For that service, great men and heroes, such as Franklin D. Roosevelt, General Pershing, and J. Edgar Hoover, have given them the highest praise. We, in our city, like other cities and communities, are proud of the parent-teacher associations, the local automobile clubs, and the police departments for the interest and cooperation so willingly given in sponsoring these patrols. We cannot buy our way out of accidents or sudden death. Therefore, we are grateful for the service rendered by these safety patrol groups. Isn't it too bad that there are still many schools that do not have them? To better understand the work of the patrols, let us first look at the patrol boy as an individual. You can bet he is an individual. Whether he's a little shaver who skins his knees roller skating, or a sizable young man hoping the football coach will notice those broad shoulders. First of all, he must be in good standing. By that we mean passing grades and good conduct. Then he is selected because he is alert, considerate of others, and has a pretty good understanding of the word duty. The special training that follows for the school safety patrol is easy. So much now for the boy, that is, as an individual. Now let us consider a problem that comes to every mother of a very young lady on that bright day in September when school opens, with the school several blocks away and a number of busy intersections and dangerous crossings between home and school, it might be well to learn how someone who knows just what route is best and what provisions have been made to safeguard this very young lady at these crossings. The neighborhood surrounding most schools include several busy street crossings. Wherever possible, the more dangerous one should be avoided even if it makes the route to be traveled by school children a little longer. Although the school's authority in most communities does not extend beyond the school grounds, it is responsible for the conduct of its safety patrol boys, even though they may be stationed several blocks away. Pupils are told by their teachers what routes to use. Parents are advised to insist that their children travel these routes where school safety patrols guard the more dangerous crossings. Now, mother's young lady, all fresh and shining in bows and buttons, can venture forth by herself. Little sister also takes an interest in the occasion, feeling that someday she too will be old enough to go to school. But now, mother doesn't need to worry about her grown-up daughter. As for the young lady, that long, long walk to school alone could turn out to be a heart-fluttering adventure. Ah, a boyfriend. Who can tell what this will turn out to be? In a few years, he might become her favorite book carrier or he might manage to get on the school safety patrol. At any rate, he's doing a pretty good job right now. For that matter, so is the patrol boy. His job at this moment is a responsible one. And besides, who wants to lug some girl's books all over town anyhow? 
except maybe going home, and if she wants to wait until a fellow gets off duty. One of the important points that the school safety patrols and the motorists should understand is that these boys do not have the right to signal a motorist to stop or proceed. His sign and the easily seen white belt he wears are warnings to the motorist. It is the pupil who must recognize his authority and obey his signals wherever he is stationed. However, it is the wise motorist and the cautious child who in respecting the services of the school safety patrol boys keep out of serious trouble at school street intersections and are in turn respected in their communities for their consideration of others. In one of the Ohio towns among the first to realize the importance of school safety patrols, there is today one of the few pioneers still active in organizing and training these patrol groups. To his chief, he is Police Sergeant Peter Shagan, but to 45,000 school children during his last 23 years on the police force, he has always been affectionately referred to as Pete. And today, even his chief wouldn't think of making him late for his appointment at some school where a group of boys is in training. To him, this has been and still is his life's work. And when he patrols the school zones in his personally owned shiny station wagon, Pity the careless motorist who fails to obey the school zone signs. For you see, Pete is very proud of the fact that in his town, during the past 23 years, there has not been one accident involving a child on the way to and from school. And he is determined to continue being proud. Not that he takes all the credit for this fine safety record, he will tell you it is due to the great work all of his school safety patrols have done ever since he started his one-man safety campaign 23 years ago. To say that this man is likable is putting it mildly, for he has a way with the smaller pupils as well as with the older students. Pete finds it easy to teach boys the seriousness of the work for which they have volunteered and been chosen. Every rule in the school safety patrol book is discussed in a manner that makes it clear and logical. Most of these fellows in a year or two will be driving their dad's cars or maybe their own hot rods and you can bet they will be safe drivers too. Peter Shagan feels that in order to control pupils who cross streets at busy intersections, the patrol boy must first know how to cross safely. This becomes something like a game as the whole group enters into the spirit of the occasion. And it gives them a chance to observe the proper procedure for a school safety patrol boy, as demonstrated by Pete himself. All the fine points are not learned in any one lesson. And if anyone knows how to drill a group, it's that fellow Shagan. Sergeant Pete also contends that you should start them out young he urges teacher supervisors to cooperate in planting the seeds of safety in the minds of even their youngest pupils. Cooperation in teaching the first principles of responsibility to those volunteers has helped greatly in achieving the remarkable safety record for school children in this community. Frequent inspections by the teacher supervisors are also necessary. In Ohio, as in most other states, the automobile clubs donate sufficient standard equipment for the school safety patrols, the white Sam Brown belt and the badge. It is the responsibility of the boys to see that these are kept clean and in good condition. Wearing properly this equipment, the neat adjustment of the belt that is, and the right location of the badge on the belt, helps the public to recognize an alert patrolman and wins the respect he deserves. All the belts seem to pass inspection now, and the badges are, well, wait a minute. It belongs up here, fellow. 
where it can be seen. When the roll call shows that all are present and alerted for duty, the supervisor who is responsible for the operation and discipline of the patrol discusses any matters or problems in connection with patrol work. If the supervisor is not unusually patient, understanding and tactful, his patrol will not be able to carry out its duties satisfactorily. With the larger and more experienced boys assigned to stations at the busier intersections, inspection can be declared over and the patrol directed to proceed to the stations and posts assigned. When the hands of the clock finally reach that long for moment in your town or city, will those pleasing words, class dismissed, be followed by scenes of rushing, tumbling children leaving the school like apples rolling out of an overturned barrel? Or will your school close the day's activities in an orderly fashion like this? Hello, are you two still playmates? Well, at any rate, he hasn't reached the book carrying stage. When a member of the school safety patrol arrives at the post assigned to him, the things he should do are clearly cut out for him and the things he shouldn't do should be cut out, period. Hey, bud, you weren't assigned to that kind of post. That belongs to the telephone company. And besides, it doesn't look anything like a cherry tree that needs chopping down. And you two fellows with the signs, playing ping pong. Don't you know that game needs a table and a net? Now this is more like it, with both of you on the ball. No games or horseplay, strictly minding the rules for safeguarding the crossing of school children, who might otherwise be injured if you weren't on the job. Some schools, although located in the suburbs, are near to a dangerous intersection, one that has to be crossed twice by most of the pupils. Such intersections may need as many as four members of the school's safety patrol. One crossing may have no traffic light, while the other crossing has one. Here, a little teamwork is needed. When the green light is about to change, the pupils who want to cross should be held back. Obeying traffic lights by the patrol also sets a good example for those children who may have to depend on lights where no safety patrol is on duty. Quite often, one finds a school located in the middle of the block. With the school walk ending as it does here, pupils are tempted to cross the street here instead of going way down to the corner. Then there is sometimes a monkey in the crowd. At least he's no gentleman. And will he listen to reason? No. He has to put up an argument, yakety, yakety. Go on, I've got my rights. This is a free country, says you, small stuff. For two bottle tops, I'd report you. Go on, beat it. And so he should report him to the school's patrol supervisor. On the other hand, violations by motorists in this town should be reported to the one man who can really lay it on, friend Pete loved and respected here by every patrol boy. Peter Shagan is also in good standing with the small fry, and he knows that many of the smaller children someday will become members of their school safety patrol. Yes, he still contends that you should start them out young. Good luck to you, Sergeant Peter Shagan. Of the several types of safety patrols, the bus patrol is probably next in line of importance. The duties of these bus patrol members in no way removes full responsibility of the bus driver. However, they do assist him by keeping order inside the bus. These bus patrol boys usually work the most effectively in pairs. One, supervise the proper seating of pupils. 
and maintains order inside the bus. The other boy stations himself outside the bus whenever pupils enter or leave. Pupils should pass in an orderly manner from school to bus, no hurrying up the bus steps and no wild scrambling for the choice seats. The bus patrol boy inside will see to that. And no standing or walking in the aisle when the bus is in motion. The driver is an experienced operator who has learned to operate his bus with safety and to observe all rules set down by the State Department of Education. His is not only a job involving grave responsibility, but also one requiring an understanding of children, especially when there are no teachers or parents around. The need for the watchful eyes of the bus patrol here is plain, and it certainly makes the driver's job a lot easier. Probably the most important part of a bus patrol's duty comes when pupils, upon leaving the bus, have to cross the road. With motorists obeying the strictest of traffic laws, that is, stopping ahead of and behind a stopped school bus, the patrol boy can then safely escort his young charges in the direction of home. And so the busy day is ended for teachers, drivers, safety patrols, and the pupils. Now should be the time for fun and games. Any scenes of children engaged in healthy outdoor play, enjoying their games and sports in safe surroundings, are scenes that warm the hearts of every man who wears the police uniform. One important part of our job is to prevent accidents. We're just as anxious as everyone else to protect children because men of the police force also have families. But we must have cooperation and help. Maybe we're just a little more anxious than most folks, but we see so many tragic examples of carelessness. The saddest moment in a police officer's line of duty comes when he is called to the scene of an accident involving a child. And it is tougher still when we, who wear the uniform as a symbol of protection, have to call on some unfortunate parent bearing bad news. However, there are some bright moments in a police officer's life especially when he notices the fine work the school safety patrol is doing. In this picture, you have seen them performing their duties in an outstanding manner. These boys should be recognized. Their services are to be respected. In a few years, they will be the leading citizens in their community and their country. And when we see our nation's colors floating proudly in the breeze, reflected against the blue sky, we should always be reminded that this great country of ours was born of freedom. Every day throughout this land, as safety patrol boys are busily engaged in guarding young lives in large cities, small towns, and rural communities, they are not only performing a duty to their school and their town, but a patriotic duty to their country, where protection is a part of freedom, even for small living things of the beautiful outdoors that we all enjoy or who does not enjoy a tramp through the woods or a hike through the fields on a beautiful autumn day. When out hiking, we are quite often reminded of these small creatures who need our protection when we come across signs that remind us of game laws and ask our cooperation in protecting our wildlife. By thinking and practicing safety every day and by observing all laws, you too can live to enjoy the better things in life. This boy, a member of the safety patrol has been taught to respect the rights of others. Wouldn't it be a good idea to use a new slogan asking Aaron to help us protect our child life? 
what do you fellows of the safety patrol think of that